The latest drone aircraft is absolutely beyond the reach of any enemy radars, and its speed exceeds the speed of sound six times. This colorful beauty is even able to detect a small mouse from 20,000 meters and collect information from tens of hundreds of square kilometers, so it can even easily spy on the president or the military. Moreover, it can also destroy the enemy. To be able to do this, it has a whole arsenal of deadly weapons. The Lockheed Martin SR-72 is the fastest aircraft in the world and is designed as an unmanned hypersonic spy built for reconnaissance, tracking, and striking. Besides, its combat capabilities are no worse than those of bombers or fighters. It can use hypersonic missiles in the air as well as drop heavy ammunition on the ground. Martin is also working hard on developing beam weapons. The combat capabilities of the aircraft allow it to hit targets in difficult conditions that are considered risky for slower aircraft. The maximum speed of the SR-72 is 6 Mach or 7,350 km per hour. If you fly at such speed, say, over a house, it will crumble like a sandcastle from the shockwave, and such power would turn military equipment upside down with no difficulty at all. Thanks to its incredible speed, it can even dodge modern fighter jets and circumnavigate the globe in just a couple of hours. In case you didn't get it by its name, the SR-72 is the direct successor of another SR-71 Blackbird spy plane. This beauty has been in the most dangerous battles, flown around almost the whole world, and hasn't ever been shot down, which is quite impressive. More than 5,000 rockets were launched in its direction, but none of them hit the target. Just think about it. It can fly around the entire planet in 11 hours and reach the moon in four days. It is the most important strategic reconnaissance aircraft developed in the United States. Its main feature is its unattainable speed, which is four times faster than sound, as well as its incredible flight height, which allows you to see how round the Earth is. Due to its unreal parameters, there was no point in equipping it with any protection since missiles can't catch up with it. By the way, not a single reconnaissance aircraft in history has operated in more hostile airspace than this beauty. And it is even more surprising that it has never been damaged, even after having been in the most popular hotspots. The unique engines for the Blackbird were developed in the shortest time possible. They operate in a special afterburner mode that allows the aircraft to achieve extremely high rates of 3,500 km per hour. Such a fast flight speed raises the temperature to 316 degrees C on the outer skin of the aircraft, which is enough to completely melt standard aluminum hulls. That's why a special titanium alloy had to be used for the Blackbird, the development of which prompted the US to make a secret deal with the USSR. The former supply titanium to America, and America doesn't mess with them for some time. But the Blackbird's troubles didn't end there. The engine, the canopy, the landing gear, the hardware, everything suffered from extreme temperatures. So the design of the aircraft had to be changed urgently. The engines needed to be recycled. Gaps had to be made in the structure. In short, the engineers had to work hard to make the aircraft normal. But they had no idea that what they would get is not just a good plane, but the best one in its class. The final tests revealed that the Scout can safely operate at a maximum speed of 3,500 km per hour, more than 25,000 meters above the ground. It's incredible that the Blackbird can conduct reconnaissance and track the movements of every single person even that high above the ground. I guess it won't be a surprise to learn that this plane was by no means the first attempt by the US to build something like this. Not surprisingly, Many countries are developing military technology that we may never know about. But over time, we could still piece together a complete picture, based on rumors or direct admissions from people who worked at secret bases hidden around the world. In 2013, the U.S. Air Force launched a secret spy plane over the Pacific Ocean. The unknown object was on a national collection mission. In simple terms, it was spying against states like North Korea and China. All other information about it was classified, but an interesting document surfaced over time. It had the details about the apparatus design, its characteristics, features, and who worked on it. But its name was scratched out with a marker, just like we see in movies about classified materials. The experts managed to make out that the name consists of eight letters. At the time, 
there was only one plane in the U.S. that would fit the role of this secret apparatus, the RQ-170 Sentinel. There were many rumors and legends about it as it was developed at the most mysterious military base, Area 51. It was not just an airplane, but a real technological breakthrough. While other countries were only operating manned scouts, the Sentinel was a true drone. With a wingspan of 12 meters, it could reach speeds of up to 1,000 kilometers per hour, and its stealth technology made it harder to be spotted. The stealthy drone was designed with one main goal in mind, to spy on important enemy targets. The RQ-170 did its job perfectly, as it even was able to find a secret hideout of Osama bin Laden. It carried out its mission in the Pacific Ocean from Anderson Air Base in Guam. During the last drone deployment, they were probably gathering information about North Korea's nuclear ballistic missile and space program. Later, the American newspaper, The Washington Post, reported that the development cost the U.S. Department of Defense $6 billion. A huge price, but it was worth paying to get the valuable information this spy was able to provide. But it wasn't even the Sentinel that was the first of its kind. Well, now it's time to talk about the real legend. The plane that pioneered all spy aircraft and its name is the U-2. It was vastly different from all existing aircraft. In fact, it had no armor or weapons, which made military experts skeptical about creating such a peculiar plane. At some point, Lockheed even had the possibility of becoming bankrupt, having spent a lot of money for nothing. However, they were saved by the CIA, which believed in the project. And no wonder, because who else but the CIA would be interested in a high-flying reconnaissance vehicle which could spy on anybody? That's how the U-2 we're talking about today came to be. It was designed to penetrate deep into enemy territory for the sole purpose of gathering reconnaissance information, which is why it was equipped with a series of sensors and cameras that were incredibly powerful for their time. Flying more than 21,000 meters above the ground, the U-2 was out of the reach of Soviet jets and missiles at first. In order for the U-2 to do its job, however, Lockheed engineers had to find a fuel that would not evaporate at high altitudes. Who would have thought what came in handy? De Chlorvos. How so? It's pretty simple. The Shell Oil Company made a special low-vapor kerosene fuel for the Scout, using petroleum byproducts that are commonly added to fly and insect repellents. Besides, the technology behind the pressurized suits designed to keep U-2 pilots alive at such high altitudes would later play a key role in the manned space program. In fact, I don't know of any other airplane that has had as much influence on the development of technology. What happened was, the U-2 accidentally made its first test flight over Groom Lake, and soon enough it flew over Soviet territory, flying virtually the entire perimeter of the country, and immediately becoming a major source of intelligence on the Soviet Union. But as great as it was, it was not without tragic events. In 1956, three CIA pilots died during the U-2 test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. And that was just the beginning. In May 1960, the Soviets shot down a U-2 over the Russian city of Sverdlovsk, capturing its pilot, Francis Gary Powers, and forcing the United States to confess to conducting covert intelligence. It's not surprising that this classified information had to be kept secret. That is why each U-2 pilot carried a tiny needle filled with poison so they could commit suicide if apprehended. However, Powers chose not to use the needle and kept himself alive, which led some people to call him a coward. Yeah, I guess it's easy to call someone a coward when you are sitting on the couch safely at home, but whatever. Thanks to the work of such scouts, the United States was able to find out that the nuclear capability of the USSR was much lower than that of America, which was a very valuable piece of information. It became clear Aircraft reconnaissance is the most important sphere worth developing, but the aircraft had to be replaced with something else. And so it happened. The best scouts were gradually replaced by drones, and of course, as the tradition goes, the greatest one was made in America. The RQ-4 Global Hawk is the world's largest unmanned aerial vehicle, which appears to be a sophisticated information system in the U.S. military. It is able to transmit a huge amount of information in real time while being in the air for more than 30 hours. This is essentially an actual drone with a wingspan of more than 35 meters, but in spite of its size, 
the hawk remains invisible thanks to the height it can fly at, which is 19 kilometers. This drone easily travels 20,000 kilometers without landing or refueling. No competitor can do that. The RQ-4 does not only have an impressive range, but also great reconnaissance capabilities. Surveillance over an area bigger than Germany? No problem. Thanks to its optoelectronic and thermal sensors, even man-sized moving targets can be detected. This is helped by a radar station, which allows to detect targets hidden under dense foliage. The drone also has a satellite data transmission system operating at 50 megabits per second, so the information comes quickly and in real time. The RQ-4 Global Hawk is a miracle of modern technology, just like all the equipment presented in this video. It won't come as a surprise if in the near future there will be something that combines all the advantages of each described apparatus. Then, even the fighters of the sixth generation will be of secondary importance.